Well, good evening. I would like to welcome you to our webinar this evening, Preparing a Frisian Horse for the Inspection, Part 5. Major, I can't believe we're at Part 5 already. <laughs> it goes fast. Presenting your Frisian horse for the inspection presented by Petra Zeeland and Duca Hoekstra. This webinar is being brought to you by the Fenway Foundation for Frisian Horses. We also want to recognize Lisa Baker and the Education Committee for coordinating this webinar. We are recording the webinar and plan to have it posted in our library in the next few days. It should also be noted that we are broadcasting live on Facebook. As we have said before, you may experience some latency issues with the broadcast. Unfortunately, this is not something that we as the hosts can fix. This is due to each viewer's network configuration. We would suggest that if you are experiencing issues with latency, that you conduct either a spe speed test or a latency test for future broadcasts. The other option is, again, you can view this via our uh, Facebook Live posting. Tonight, everyone will be in listen-only mode, we will stop periodically throughout the presentation to ask questions. To submit your questions, you can use the Q&A at the bottom screen toolbar. If you are on Facebook, please write your question in the comment and we will try to get it answered for you. I would now like to turn our presentation over to Petra. Petra, welcome. Thank you. I'm trying to get some light. Okay. Thank you and welcome everybody who's joining us again. Um, last time I um, talked about uh, all the things you have to have in order before you go to a curry. Um, tonight I'm going to have uh, an explanation about uh, practice for the curing in hand, for the in hand pre presentation, practicing for that. Um, what I did is I uh, tried to um, work with what you guys have over there. We have runners and big stables to prepare our horses. Um, you don't always have that opportunity in uh, Northern America. So from that perspective, I uh, made my presentation. So I hope that will help you out a lot. Um, I wanna start with in and around the show ring. Um, for us, it is important and for the runners that will come over that the horses have respect, trust and balance in behavior training and movement. Respect starts at home, in the stable, in the wash rack, walking in hand and things like that. Um, I talked about this <clears throat> two webinars ago that what we see happening in front of the curring ring and we see that um, in multiple uh, countries um, that when they uh, go to the curring ring and they have to wait for a while that the horses get anxious and uh, they don't want to wait and they start to be nervous and that uh, owners or handlers have their horses running around them they walk 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 and they're turning and turning and turning they're losing all the all the energy that they need to present themselves in the arena. So that's something to think about when you uh, go to the curring. Um, know what your time is for the presentation. Sometimes it uh, runs early, sometimes it runs late. Um, be aware of those things. Walk up to the arena a couple of times or have uh, a connection with somebody who has a phone and who is at the arena and can tell you you have to come now or you have you can wait for another 10 minutes or there's one horse uh, in front of you that's my son in the background he just woke up <laughs> um so those are important things to uh think of when you go to the curring so wait for a while before you go to to present your horse, make sure that you don't have to stand there for a long time or when you have to wait and you don't have a stable to wait in, make sure that you stand there with multiple horses so they keep each other calm. Um, and just make sure that somebody helps you um, time-wise to be ready um, at the uh, ring. Uh, trust, this is for the weeks coming up to the curry. Take a little 
emotional distance the last couple of weeks. Um, I will explain that. Um, what we see is when a horse gets a little bit nervous that owners start to pet them and treat them and give them treats and oh good boy good boy good boy and they don't take a leadership position that means that uh, the horse will take that leadership position and when the horse is scared it will um, stay scared so when it comes in a new situation it will react like that uh, nervous or panicky or things like that so try not to respond emotional to your horse try to be a leader and uh, be very um as a strong person so a very strong leader so when you walk the horse walk proud big steps when you walk it to the to the field don't you know linger and walk slowly and pet the horse or let it graze a little bit here or let it sniff over there be very consistent in what you do um, in your daily thing with your horse that helps the runners a lot um, the last couple of weeks i usually recommend to um, emotionless corrections without treats that makes you more of a leader so important respond emotionless a horse can read your emotions and um, if the horse depends on you a lot by uh, uh, um, depending on your emotions then it will be you you don't know how it will respond in a new environment again so that is very important you need to be the leader you need to act like nothing's wrong when there's a bomb exploding you just keep going normally or you can you, you know you can um spook but then uh, um, become walk on no emotional responses that's very important to keep the horse calm balance in behavior training and movement so the balance in behavior um, and in training again it's in and around the house the pasture the wash rack stay calm uh, treat the horse the same all the time emotionless um, uh, the training the same balance in movement and in correction wise if you need to correct the horse every once in a while do it emotionless and do it the same way each time um, and that's for the movement as well balance in the movement is very important that's something that will come up in a little bit as well um, babies that's where we're gonna start that's why i had to swap it around um, we had a lot of rain last time so we couldn't do any little videos with the babies i made videos about how we bring our foals to the pasture as you can see we live on a road and we have to go on an open road and to bring them to the pasture we always do it in the same way it helps them prepare for the curing as well we don't overdo anything with them we still want to have them be a horse and be playful and have natural behavior um, I hope it will come through. As you can see, I have a rope around the butt of the baby. It's something I see a lot in Northern America as well. You halter the baby, you put a rope around the butt. Uh, the mare keeps walking in a steady pace and you try the, to keep the foal up in that speed. And as soon as the foal doesn't wanna walk, you just pull the rope and the horse, uh, the foal keeps going. What I add to that is that I keep a little pressure on the halter. So the baby knows that they need to keep going forward, even though there's pressure on the halter. Babies tend to stop, rear and fall backwards if you don't pay attention oh, to uh, that point. You see, I keep a little pressure on the halter and I keep the baby going in a steady pace to the pasture. You can see the horses over there. And that's where we bring them. This little baby doesn't go in the group yet. Um, it's born a month and a half after the other ones. The other ones are pretty feisty. So we keep this one separate until this one is big enough. The next step, this is in the field. Um, 
in a lot of our uh, local governments were not allowed to put up wooden fences. So we have electrical fencing. It's a little bit the same at the curing. You have wire or um, caution tape that uh, works as a, a border for uh, the curing ring. So I usually take the baby around like this so she or he uh, knows how big it is and that they're wires. And sometimes we even wait until they sniff the wire and they get a little shock so they know what it is and we're still in the neighborhood to prevent the baby from panicking. Same here. I walk with the baby. Karsten, that was my son in the back, um, keeps walking with the mare just to make sure it's in a steady pace and we keep going. The next step to prepare for the curing is um, that the baby knows that there is pressure on the halter because after this and in the curing arena, the baby needs to walk next to the mother on the rope and the handler who holds the mare needs to hold the baby as well. They walk together. So what I do is I start putting pressure. So this baby um, all does this for the first time in this video and nothing is perfect. So this isn't perfect either, but it's a way to practice. Pressure on the halter. And I put my hand on the butt, make sure that as soon as it feels pressure, it goes forward instead of uh, walking backwards or rearing. Kasten is waiting for me to do this exercise before I hand the rope um, to him. After this, after this exercise, um, I walk with the mare and I don't put the rope around the butt anymore. This will be the first time that we lead the baby without the rope behind the butt. This is as an exercise for the curing. I asked my father to help. Um, he's 74 by now. Um, he uh, likes to help with the horses. So uh, he walks behind the foal when I try to direct the foal uh, to stay with the mom. So I slowly. And as you can see in a minute, the foal panics a little bit because the rope goes away from the butt and jumps and runs. This is the first time my father keeps walking with us to make sure that the foal doesn't stop. And this is just the beginning of the um, practicing for the curing. Now I hand over the rope to Karsten. So we did a couple of laps, but I don't want to uh, show all those minutes because that we found out the last time that that doesn't work. So I hand over the rope to Karsten. We have a longer rope than we usually have because the foal will pull and hang a little bit. And um, we start walking in a minute. The foal will panic again a little bit just because this is the first time. Karsten is strong, he holds the rope, and there you go. We use the chest of the mare to put the rope in front of when we need to, because the mare, of course, is so strong and heavy that the foal will never pull over the mare. Um, if the baby wants to go forward, we just let it happen, because you want to keep the baby's natural behavior in going forward. So if it wants to play your buck or something, it's okay as long as it doesn't hang on that rope. That is very important. Full preparation. So that's that was the walking of the, the full. Um, I have to check if it, we didn't lose. Oh, something is going wrong. There you go. Um, the days before you go to the curing, you need to decide on um, or weeks about clipping, body clipping, yes or no, washing, yes or no. Um, and the farrier, of course, 
Um, in your case, the babies are pretty old when they go to the curing, so for sure the farrier has uh, done them uh, before you go to the curing. Um, a lot of the times we don't even um, have to do them because it's not time for them yet to go uh, to the farrier, so uh, that comes later um, when they get older. <clears throat> but that's just because we have more currents than you guys have. Um, clipping. Uh, you can choose to clip the body of the baby. Um, in your case, when it's very warm, um, it helps them sometimes. But you don't have to. The judges, um, premium-wise or uh, point-wise, don't score uh, the coat of your horse. It's just in the end when it goes when you go for the championship and your foal is invited, then they will probably go for the more black foal than the brownish foal. And that's something you can't control. Uh, body clipping would help. They turn out blacker, of course. Um, this baby, I just did a facial clip. Uh, we rubbed this baby um, almost every day with a rubber brush to get the old and brown hairs out. So I don't like to body clip them because our weather is so up and down and cold and um, rainy uh, through the summer. Uh, sometimes it's very warm and sometimes it's very cold. So I like to keep it natural. I just do the face and the ears. Of course, you don't take all the hair out of the ears. Um, and a little bit of the legs if you're able to touch the legs with a clipper. Sometimes just a rag with oil uh, over the legs will flatten out the baby hairs as well. So it all depends on how the character of your baby is. Uh, washing or no washing. I almost never wash the folds. Um, the experience is with our weather and sometimes the nights that can get very cold is rain doesn't go all the way to the skin, but as soon as you start washing with soap that uh, they get all the way wet to the skin and their natural uh, grease is washed out of the skin. So when it rains afterwards, the foals can get sick quicker. So I prefer just to spray them um, with detangler and um, rub that in the day before, and then just give a good uh, grooming uh, before we load them. And then of course the oil uh, before we bring them to the <clears throat> uh, curing ring. So that's usually what I do with the babies. Our curing, um, the day of the curing is, um, very busy when you go to a fogdag. Uh, this is a picture of a fogdag and this is the area where all the people stand and wait with their foals before they enter the arena. As you can see, there are a lot. Um, what is important that as um, handlers of the mare and baby is that you stay together. What we see happen a lot is people are so enthusiastic and glad that they're at the currying and they're meeting a lot of people and everybody is happy to see each other again that one of the persons is walking off to the stables with the mom and the other one is still busy talking and is holding the baby. Now, as expected, the baby wants to go with the mom but the person who's busy talking doesn't pay a lot of attention to it. And what happens is the baby gets anxious and tries to pull towards the mom. And then often we see happen that the baby rears and it, uh, it, it's uh, scared or it jumps and it falls over backward. And uh, you get like uh, bruised ribs or uh, scabs or, uh, uh, you know, uh, a bloody scrape or whatever, and you want to prevent that. So please, when you hold your mare and baby, stay together, let the baby drink. Also, when you wait um, for the ring, if the baby wants to drink, let it drink a little bit. You can see that even in this picture, 
Uh, there's a baby drinking over here, but most important thing is to keep your head and your mind with the horses. You know, um, talk to the people afterwards when you put the horses back to the stall, in, in their stall. Um, it prevents a lot of accidents and disappointments. And you don't want to have go home with a lame foal or go into the arena with a lame foal just because you're too excited to um, pay attention or you're so excited that you see somebody you saw last year and you want to talk with them. Um, it's something we see happen. So um, be aware of that. This is another waiting area at one of our Fakdag. They put up a little area you can see the mares and babies um, standing and waiting before they go in and as you can see everybody just keeps the baby with the mom to make sure that they stay calm and with a mom and a baby it's not a big of a problem just to stand there for <clears throat> 5 10 20 minutes as long as um, the mare isn't showing then um, it's okay to wait a little while. And as long as the horses are calm, it's okay to stand there, even though the mare is, uh, has to show that day, as long as you make sure that they're calm and relaxed. Um, because we practice with them in the walk, you can see this is me and that's Duca, the mare and the baby. We always walk together just to make sure that um, you know, you're not alone with the baby and horse. And I keep the baby close to Duca while he's handling the mare. The mare is a hot mare, so it's difficult to um, have them both and walk to the trailer. So it's fine in the arena, but as soon as they're done, um, it's easier to go like this. Now for the presentation, as you can see, I have a little black halter on my foal. Um, I like those better than the white ones. I think they're very chic. Um, of course, when the horse goes on the trailer, it gets another one because this one uh, breaks easy. It's good enough for that day, but as soon as it's done showing, we put the other one on. And please put a fitting bridle on your mare uh, when you need to present the foal. What we run into often is that uh, people have the baby looking perfect, but the mare comes in a halter and a rope. Now the mare knows it has to run too, is, is a little bit excited too. It's nervous because of the whole environment. And it's hard for the runners to control the mare when it doesn't wear a bridle. So a curing bridle uh, is fine, but uh, an English um, riding uh, bridle is also fine as long as it fits and the bit is in the correct place so the mom doesn't play with the tongue too much. Very important. And you have happy runners when you do that. And that's important too. Overall, you can see here the pictures of the people, how they walk in the arena with the foals. This is in the arena, the first one left up. Um, the handler has the baby. And the mare on the right, a handler, baby, and mare. Um, left bottom, they're going up to the arena. And left, uh, right bottom, um, also after judging, they all come back into the arena if you're invited, or sometimes just everybody comes back. Depends on <clears throat> what uh, they decide to do uh, that day. And again, then the handler has both of the horses and you just walk uh, on the inside in the arena just to make sure that the baby doesn't stop walking and you make sure that the baby keeps walking. And in the middle, you can see over here, we just have a bunch of horses all together. Um, not too close because mares can get angry on other foals or mares when they get too close to the baby. So make sure, be aware of the horses around you on the curring um, place so that you don't get too close and none of the horses or people get kicked by a horse who's just trying to defend, defend its um, area. Next. 
this is a picture I want you to show. So this baby is not clipped at all. As you can see, it is pretty brown, but that is not a big problem. Um, these people decide to not clip it and it was earlier in the season, so it had a lot of sun and um, it's still short but brown. So judges don't look at the color, only at the complete end uh, when the horses are equal in movement and exterior, then the color comes in. So, but um, health wise, um, if they're out at night, our horses are out at night, whole summer, summer and winter, um, thunderstorms, rain, they're always outside. Um, I'm in the field twice a day, just checking on them. And um, that's why I don't clip uh, the babies, body clip the babies. I just make sure that I rub them really well with rubber brushes. Again, a picture. Uh, the face is nicely clipped and uh, you can see short hair but brown that's okay same over here this one already comes through the uh, coat and another one that is pretty brown it's not a big problem over here this is a picture i want to show um, as you can see the picture what I want to tell, the picture looks really perfect. This cult of mine got invited to the champions, championships. Um, I was very excited, a little nervous. I was already happy with the first premium, of course. Now, horses are unpredictable. My cult was very confident, but at the end of the day, in that presentation, we rebuild our arenas. They get bigger when we uh, put up the championship. The colt went in with the mom, they walked nicely, they unhooked the halter and the baby did one lap and then completely panicked, probably because of the music and it couldn't hear its mother. And it just ran right through all the ribbons, all the uh, caution tape. It took all the poles with them. It jumped over some, you know, the benches you have in your um, um, sport, sports classes, the lower ones. It jumped over it, it jumped through the seats. People had to jump away and it did it twice. So he didn't got champion because he didn't present itself. It was completely panicked. So we loaded up. I was just happy he was completely safe, uh, no injuries. Um, and then, you know, we did the walking, it was haltered, it was well behaved, but it just got blind and panicked. It can happen, nobody's fault. It happens sometimes. I just have to think of it when we plan to break this cold that it can be like that that's all the right oh the right top picture i want to show you this horse um, the mom is an older mare as you can see you can see the ribs a little bit um, the horse still looks very healthy is nicely groomed is clipped um, and looks like it's healthy enough still to present your foal. Now make sure that when you bring your mare and foal to the curring, that it's not just the foal. Your mare needs to be healthy. It uh, would be nice if you groomed it, clipped it, and have it a nice bridle on for the runners. That would be really nice. Important is, is that the horse is sound and healthy. So don't... Um, go with your mare to the curring if you know it's lame. Um, very important. It happened a couple of times. It can happen while you're traveling because you guys have to travel a lot uh, for a lot of miles, uh, hours sometimes, and sometimes even a day that you check out your mare in full when you unload them and make sure the mare isn't lame or really crippled or something because the judges uh, will excuse you and ask you to leave the arena when they see that. So be aware of it. It's, you can't 
prevent it when it happens, just um, make sure that you go don't go into the arena like that because they, um, yeah, they will excuse you and they won't be able to judge your fall. Maybe there is another solution, keep the mare in the middle and have the fall run around, but usually that does not work. So make sure that that is in order. Uh, for us, after the curring, <clears throat> after the first presentation, we have to go to the chippers at our currings. Um, we have chippers and they pull the DNA um, and take the samples to the stud book. That's not the case for you guys. I think you have to have your babies chipped by the veterinarian. Um, the stud book or the fauna does pull hair out of the tail and the mane of the baby when uh, they're done curing or maybe even early in the morning when they check all the chips and measure the mares. Um, it depends on the curing or the organization, I guess. So Petra, I'll just comment on that. Our, uh, yeah. our association does require the, that the uh, full is chipped prior to the inspection. Uh, we do not have uh, anyone at the inspection that will chip. Mm -hmm. um, all microchips are checked at the inspection. Um, and then of course your DNA needs to be pulled by a vet normally when you do the chipping and sent to our office for verification. So we do that on 100% of all of our folds. Okay, good. I wasn't sure about that. So yeah. that's why I pointed it out. Um, so first preemie chip, DNA and back to the trailer. Um, we keep them on the trailer during the day. Um, when it gets too hot, we're not allowed to do the curing or we start earlier or uh, split it in two or go to the evening. But um, late the last couple of years, it's getting warmer and warmer over here. So we never had that problem. Uh, now we do have that problem and uh, organizations try to um, think of it and sometimes late in the evening you can get an email or a text like we're going to start two or three hours earlier just to make sure that the horses don't have to stay over during the day in the heat um, okay again back to the respect that was the curing of the babies um, if anyone has any questions about that please um, ask them um, I don't know if there were any questions about this. Okay. Um, again, I put this uh, list up. Same is for uh, the adult horses or younger uh, judgeable horses from three years and up. And even the one and two year olds you want to uh, show respect, trust and balance. Um, again, I made a couple of videos, but at first, Practice without a runner. What I do is in my arena, um, if I did my um, walking in hand, so very, very important, and it sounds unrealistic maybe even, we walk with our horses on um, pavement, cement, or um, asphalt just to make sure that uh, they balance themselves well. We also trot. I showed it in two webinars ago that we do trot up and down and the sound of the shoes on the stones, on the uh, um, cement or on the, the asphalt makes them more um, secure more confident and the more you walk an important very important an active walk walk as fast as the horse wants to walk active have somebody walk behind it walk 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 the more you walk and have active walks up and down it doesn't have to be hours and hours and hours sometimes it's just up and down the driveway twice a day and lunging to keep the body relaxed make sure that you have an active, proud walk with your horse like you're on a catwalk. Walk, walk, walk. And the more you do it, the more confident and balanced your horse gets. Um, my preparation, when I don't have a runner, what I did in the past was in my arena, I, the red 
are jumping poles on the ground, jumping poles on the ground. What I did, I had the horse go on the rail. And when I want to change reins, I one person over here, one person over here. And when you want to keep the horse going in a rhythm and in a nice balance, the person over here walks over there and then the horse automatically, if it starts to get it, changes reins and start to go in the other way. So I have some videos of that too. I made short videos. You can see the jumping poles on the floor. Um, this horse is the first time I'm handling it. It's a three-year-old. Um, I think it's launched a couple of times. Nobody has ridden it yet. And it's been in front of the carriage uh, about seven times. So that's maybe twice a week it's handled uh, in training because it's a young horse and it's a, a pretty big horse and it grew very fast. So I never touched this horse. This is the first time I want to get to know the horse a little bit. This is the arena where the horse is always trained, but uh, as soon as you change something in an area that is known to them, they are very surprised. So what I do is I walk, the horse around just to make sure that it understands. I'm the leader. You can see I walk confident, forward, active. And as soon as the horse tries to creep behind me because it's scared of something, I uh, pull the uh, lunge line a little bit just to make it attentive and to make sure that it understands that it has to pay attention to me and not all the things that it sees. Okay, going to the next. I lunged the horse a little bit, like I showed in earlier webinars. After that, um, I turned the horse loose and have it use the whole arena. So here it goes. Low, relaxed, length in the neck, balanced trot straight lines. The horse keeps a nice rhythm, nice pace, active in the hind end. We're here with three people, one is filming and two are standing there with the whip. Important is to see that it's balanced. I can see on my phone that the videos are a little bit jumpy. Um, the videos will be available later also on my YouTube channel, just to make sure that the idea of what we want to see is clear. So balanced, straight lines, um, long, low, relaxed, and the nice, the right muscle tension from back to front is very important. Now for more of a show trot, if your horse doesn't want to go straight that easy, I just change around the poles a little bit or put caution tape up to make sure that the horse stays balanced straight and forward. Um, again, this is what I do when I don't have a runner. Um, the last time I run a curring was, I think, in 2014. That was in um, Nevada, I guess, Reno curring. Uh, I ran uh, with Deutsch and, and um, Andries as well. Um, I'm not able to do that anymore. So uh, that's why when I have a horse that goes for curring, I solve it like this. Um, and the reason you don't want to run with a horse when you're not able to keep up anymore is what you see later. I will be running a horse and you will see how you shouldn't when you can't keep up. So more of a show trot. You can already see in this still picture that this horse is more active and more underneath and more off the ground. So I hope you guys can see that in the moving video as well. Hey, I need to go back. I need to find the... There it is. So we wake it up a little bit. You can see the front is coming up. 
the tail is coming loose. And then again, this is also what I wanted to show you. It jumped into a canter. It is not a problem as long as it's not the panicky and uh, taking off in the canter. It was a nice balanced uh, canter and it came back real quick. I'm gonna show this one more time. A nice upward neck. The ropes are still on. I'm gonna explain now why the ropes are on. Um, put the sound off. The reason I do this with the ropes on because it imitates the hand of the runner. The runner wants to control the front. It, the runner wants to feel the mouth. The runner wants to steer a little bit. Um, this is a three-year-old horse. If I wouldn't be doing this, then the horse um, is less likely to accept the hand of the runner and it will open the mouth and uh, pull with the jaw and tongue and it will pull up the tongue and go over the bit. Um, the more the horse is used to a little bit of pressure in the mouth, and this is a friendly pressure because I never change the length of the ropes. This length of these ropes are the same of when the horse was in a relaxed trot and it were long ropes. So the horse is able to put up the front and lean in the ropes a little bit, like the runner would hold the ropes, uh, the hold the, the bit when it's running with your horse in the arena. Um, again, a lot of you don't have runners, so this is a very nice example of how to get your horse used to that pressure uh, so the runner can take over very easy. It also helps um, that if it's used to this and the runner needs to uh, collect the horse a little bit or pull it out of a canter uh, that the horse doesn't spook of the bit, but it's uh, used to the bit, very important. Go to the next, right after the show trot, we take it in hand. I leave the ropes on this time because we use the little pressure of the bit to ask the horse to put down the neck and relax straight away so they can show off the walk. If we don't teach them this, they will keep up the neck and tense up in the back and they will shorten the walk. Um, and tensing up the back will also make that um, they tense up more often and often and often and they are not able to show a nice floating trot with a hind end that, a hind end that comes underneath. Um, I will play this. I asked Peter Okoma um, to help me with the walk. As you can see, this is an active walk, a forward walk. Oh, and there it spooks a little bit. Um, I keep walking actively. The horse needs to keep walking actively. And as you can see, the strides are nice and lengthy and active when you do it this way. Then I present, present the horse like it's at the curring. You do that every now and then just to make sure that it understands that it needs to stand still. Even when it's tense after that show trot and after the rattle shaker and the, the flicking of the whip, that it understands that it needs to stand still and pay attention. Very important uh, that they understand this. Um, are there any questions about uh, the way I show you guys this? Or about um, foals? I saw a question coming by about a surrogate. Okay. So I have one question here. I, 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 it says you could also use side reins that go just to the sides, but not up through the chest to the girth. Is that correct? Yes, you can. The disadvantage of those side reins is that they don't change length. And if you see the ropes that I use in this way, 
the bit can slide wherever it wants to go. So if the horse wants to lengthen, the rope is there to guide the horse down and then lengthen. If you just use side ropes, the horse is stuck in one length and it's like a little robot that can do up and down, but it's not able to slide down the ropes and lengthen or put up the neck and uh, get pressure there or loose there. So there is a difference. If they try it with your horse, uh, just in training, um, I know presentation of warm bloods for occurring at the lunge line, um, KWPN warm bloods is with the side reins, um, but in training, they do have to relax as well. And if you look at the live feed currings, you will notice that the runners will put a little pressure on the bit to lengthen the neck and have the horse come down just to make sure that the top line of the horse relaxes again and the horse starts walking again. Um, Another question here is, if you have a mare who is a surrogate for a foal, is it a requirement to have your foal's actual mother present for the foal showing? No. Correct. No. Um, I believe that you, in that case, always have to do DNA of mare and foal to make sure that the foal belongs to that mare uh, that is on the paper. Um, as soon as the foal is not with its own mother, DNA has to be done of both. So, um, how do they show yearlings? I have a, okay, how do they show yearlings? Yearlings, uh, you do the same um, exercises with, but you're not able to put tech on them. Um, you have to show them bitless. So you uh, show them with a halter um, or an English low nose band that you can turn into a yearling halter. That's what I usually do. Um, and it looks pretty. Um, you can put a chain on the back. You can also have a little leather strap on the back to uh, keep it in place. Um, I have been looking for pictures for a yearling, but I couldn't find them for tonight. I will be showing that in a video on my YouTube channel. Um, so without shoes, also important for yearling is walking, 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 respect, walk, walk, walk. Um, you can do the same thing as I did with this mare, walk around in your arena, just have it outside and play in a group if that's possible, um, have it play as much as possible. Um, and then like two or three times do this in your arena, but make sure that it, if you handle it, and you walk with it, make a confident impression on your horse so the horse know it can trust you. Very important. Have somebody walk with you behind the yearling, active walk, forward, uh, proud, like on a catwalk. Any other questions? On don't have, I don't see anything else right now. I think we can okay. uh, continue. We continue. I think I had this video for questions, so I'm going to go to the next. Okay. This is don't run with a horse if you can't keep up, like me. This is that same horse. We took off the tag, and I said, okay, I want to film this because I'm not able to keep up with this horse for sure. It has a very it had very big, strong strides. It was very balanced and it was very proud by itself. Um, you will see what happens when you can't keep up with the horse um, like me running in this video. You pull the horse out of balance. You're not fast enough and uh, you um, are a, I can't find the word for it. I'll show you the video first. A 
soon as I go to the short side, I'm not able to keep up with the horse anymore. And even before the first corner, you can see the horse is pulling me instead of me running with the horse. Doing that makes the horse um, uncertain. It will spook. You could see that the horse uh, jumped away from me and you don't want to have that happen. The horse doesn't trust me. There it goes again. The horse didn't trust me and tried to pull away from me. It's not an ideal situation. I try to keep up and then we run forward again. And again, I can't keep up and I hang on the chain and I pull over the neck of the horse. So don't run with the horse when you can't keep up. I really, um, I said it before, um, I want to be realistic. I want to show you the mistakes that are made as well. If I would keep doing this with the horse once a week, the horse will um, stop trusting the runner. Um, it will start to try and um, turn away from the runner. It won't be able to take the turns the way you want. It won't stay balanced and it's not able to get underneath with the hind end and um, show the way you really want them to show. So they need to get confident. Very, very important. Next. The result of a well-balanced horse that has rhythm and confidence and respect. I hope this video is um, very good to watch. Um, I will put the sound on this one on loud. Um, the reason for that is, is because you can see the runners. This is a uh, practice evening in the Netherlands. Um, every stable has it for the currings. Uh, one has it on Tuesday night, the other one on Wednesday night. Um, they take out all the horses they have in training and they take them in hand. Um, they even start with the horses that are there only for one week. Uh, they walk with them every day. Uh, they lunge them, depending on the, the um, adulthood, the, the, the maturity of the horse, they lunge them um, two to four times a week. Um, but the most important thing what they do is walking in hand on the pavement on the stones. Um, so once a week, they take all the horses that they have in the stable and get some guys over and they run two or three laps with them in their outside arena. You can hear the horse in the back. There's no whip person here. That's why I wanted to show you this confident. You can hear me laugh. And you can hear a person fall out. There's no one with a whip. There's no one with a shaker box. This horse is so confident by itself. The walking and the balanced, relaxed lunging makes this horse trapped in this way and the natural uh, activeness and hind end and uh, floaty trap comes out because of it you saw the horse jump and try to run off but because the runner stayed calm and corrected it once and the horse knows that it won't take off it will happen again new runner the horse will try it again there it goes and then it just keeps up balance there we go. Now it looks like, I'm going to put the sound down again. It looks like they're hanging on those chains, but the only time they pull on the chain is when they come into the corner and they have to put the horse back on the hind end again. So these runners are very able to go up and down and flowy up and down with the mouth of the horse. Um, you can see when a runner hangs in the mouth or not. So it all depends on your horse as well. Um, 
I brought a horse over uh, to this evening and um, I, I've only been riding it a little bit. It hasn't been prepared for the curing. Um, the horse is spoiled and we notice it in everything on the wash rack. When it wants to turn and I'm between the wall and the horse, it just turns around. When I stick my finger in its side, tell him not to turn, she just goes like, what? And keeps turning. No respect for a human body. So very important. These guys didn't like to run with her because she showed the same disrespect in running as well. She has always gotten treats. Um, and uh, as soon as they got her, she was like, oh, hi guys, and kind of pushing over. And then they started to wake her up and it kind of went slow. What happened is then she started trotting and then suddenly she didn't understand how to stop anymore. So the runners were really hanging on her to get her back, but she kind of just kept going. And they said to me, this is not a nice horse to run with. So for that horse, I really need to put some effort in to um, make her more respectful for the runners. It's a very important um, thing for them. Um, and the runners like to run with horses that have a little bit more of respect for them. It makes their job easier. It's already pretty hard to um, work with, run with animals that are over a thousand pound and uh, stay safe. And horses like that don't make it any safer. So that's why I really want to um, point out that the balance and the respect and the rhythm is really important uh, for the runners when you train your horse at home and uh, you ask somebody else to run with your horse. Um, so this was the practicing evening. I just wanted to show the difference between what I did with the running and what these guys do with running. So you understand why I keep my um, practicing on uh, without running in the big arena with the side with the little ropes and the, the lunging tack on to make the horse stay in balance because I can't keep the balance when we're running. So very important. Next. And then you hope that the result is a mare that goes really spectacular on the curring. Um, our fogdagen are on grass. You can choose to um, put um, spikes, I the English word. Uh, you know, the screws that you put in so they don't slide. We prefer not to. It depends on the soil that we need to present them. Sometimes it happens that it's very slippery. Um, organizations can't control it. Um, the last currings all have been on sand, but our fogdagen are, I think, except one, are all on grass. Farmers um, give their uh, fields or uh, put their fields up for us to use them. Um, they mow it for us. Uh, the organization uh, puts out the rings, but the only thing we can control is how much it rained. And sometimes we end up with mud up here. Um, the horses just have to go through it. The curring won't stop because of it. And um, most of the Fogdagen were, all of them were not, um, two are able to go inside, all the other ones are not able to go inside. So um, we just have to deal with it and you can put those uh, screws in uh, or not. We prefer not to because it prevents the natural movement of the hoof when it wants to turn or slide a little bit in the grass. Um, we prefer not to use it because especially in the walk, it can get, have a negative effect on your horse. This was the result of this horse. She became champion of our breeding day three times. A very confident, very proud mare that always presented herself. Um, that was our result. I hope that you guys have that 
same result after you put the effort in in training and of course the horse has to have the talent as well and a judge if a horse doesn't show perfect they usually um, see through it that the horse needs to be uh, behaved if the horse is uncontrolled they can ask you to leave the arena and come back later if the horse calms down um, we had it once this year on a thuiskeuring um, that one of the horses um, came into the arena uh, it's been trained in that arena probably a couple of times the neighbor had cows the neighbor changed fields with the cows and the cows ended up next to the outside arena where the curring was um, none of the horses had problems with it this horse panicked so bad that um, it, the only thing it wanted to do is go out, pulled the runner, constantly reared up, panicked, uh, tried to, or not try to, accidentally uh, almost run over the judges. And uh, what they did is they asked them to leave the arena, go back to the stables, calm the horse down. Um, and some people that were helping just chase the cows away a little bit, and the, at the end of the curring, the horse came back and presented itself very well. It was just really scared of the cows. So anything can happen. You can do the best you can, but um, as long as you make your horse confident, um, very respectful, it's easier for everyone to show them. Um, and then my last page. Um, all the videos of the webinars will be um, available at uh, the FANA site and for the people who want to look at the videos better without any um, shaking or uh, how do you call that again, uh, shocks, uh, you can go to my YouTube channel and um, at the Petra Salins Friesian Horses. For the live feed, I think it's very important for everyone to um, look at the live feed currings so and the reason for that is that um the horses can look really spectacular and uh, remember that the horse that you bring to the curring is still the same horse that you bring home nothing changed the only thing that changed is that some people from the netherlands looked at your horse and graded it Nothing changed about the character, nothing changed about the horse that you came with. Only the paper changes. Important is to know and look at those videos and see what they look at day in, day out over here. Um, so you uh, can see uh, what the goal is of the KFPS and the FANA um, for the currings and what they expect to look at when they come and uh, judge your horses. Um, I think it's a positive thing of the corona uh, that we have those live feeds and I think people can learn of it uh, a lot and um, important look at them and learn from them. Very important as you and you will probably see that 99% of the horses uh, all have that um, um, respect for the runners, the, the confidence to trot, the balance and the power to come off the floor. Um, look at it um, and learn from it. Um, I think that is it. Yes, any questions? I was just looking and I didn't see any questions. I don't have anything uh, popping up on my screen. I don't know if you're seeing anything uh, different. A um, couple of announcements I'll make while well, some, some, well, we give uh, everyone who's watching tonight just a uh, moment if they do have some questions. Um, our 2021 inspections this year for North America are being sponsored by Horses to Fly. And i uh, just like to uh, thank them for their support of our inspections. A um, couple deadlines that uh, everyone needs to remember, uh, mark these on your calendars, that uh, August 6th is the deadline for your entries. After that date, 
Uh, there will be late fees assessed. Um, and IBOPs have to be in by August 20th. Uh, no IBOPs are accepted after that date. Um, so we have to be able to uh, allow each site to make the appropriate arrangements if an IBOP is scheduled. And uh, that's the date that uh, they can make that happen. So uh, nothing will be accepted after August 20th. Um, another announcement is Washington and Oregon have just recently switched and the Washington inspection will now be held in uh, outside Fort, uh, Mount Hood, uh, Oregon. So uh, I'll be looking at your schedules for that one. Um, while, I, while you've been uh, presenting this, Petra, I've been uh, getting our, uh, our mayor show invitations uh, ready to be mailed out. So everybody should be receiving their uh, mayor show invitations. These will go out to all of the uh, star model crown mayors um, that have already achieved that. And of course, any that achieve it this year at the inspections are welcome to attend that as well. Another uh, uh, little uh, announcement I'd like to make here is while we are still dealing with uh, COVID protocols here, um, the board of directors uh, with the recommendations of the uh, inspection committee have put together a few parameters uh, in case COVID does affect you from attending. Uh, so I'm just gonna read those real quick just so everybody is aware. Uh, parameter one is participants are required to supply documentation from a primary care provider. Uh, this would include a positive COVID test result and must require for self-quarantining during the registered inspection date. Uh, that is one of the parameters that you can receive a full refund uh, for your inspection entry. Um, also, a statement reflecting local public policy that does not allow public gatherings due to COVID restrictions for an outbreak. So if uh, your uh, inspection site all of a sudden had to shut down because of whatever the COVID protocols might be for that area, uh, you would also receive a uh, full refund. And this one here, we, we sure hope this one doesn't happen. But if for some reason the KFPS judges are unable to attend an inspection site due to COVID travel restrictions, again, you will receive a... Uh, full refund. Um, we just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of that. Um, Petra, I'm not seeing any other questions coming in here. Uh, you know, on behalf of the Fenway Foundation for Frisian Horses, I can't thank you enough, Petra, for, for what you and uh, Duke have done over the last five months. You know, I know it's what, two o'clock in the morning there or one o'clock in the morning there. So yep. um, spending these late evenings with us and our membership, we can't thank you enough and uh, can't wait till you can come over and, and see everybody and see some of your friends as well. So uh, yes. we want to thank you very much. You're welcome. And please look at the live feeds and learn from it. And if there's still any questions coming up, send me a PM at Facebook or through Jason and I can answer them. So thank you for having me. Yep. And a uh, reminder that this was recorded and we'll have this on our uh, YouTube station uh, within the next uh, 24, 48 hours. So Petra, thank you again so much. I, I don't have any other questions that have come up. So uh, I, I can't wait to see you again. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Good night. Right. Thanks, Petra. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you.